Question number one. Two buses leave the same station at 8 p.m. One bus travels north at a rate of 30 kph, and the other travels east at 40 kph. How many kilometers are the buses at 10 p.m.? So in this problem, we know that two buses traveled for two hours from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. So let's assume that this point is the starting point and one bus travels north at 30 kilometers per hour. So in two hours, what's the distance traveled by bus number one? 60 kilometers, right? Because we need to do 30 times two hours. Now, for bus number two, the distance will be how many kilometers? It's traveling at 40 kilometers per hour. 80 kilometers, right? Because we need to multiply 40 times 2. So this is 80 kilometers. And the question is, how many kilometers apart are the buses at 10 p.m.? So this means we need to find this missing distance. And we will label this C. Since one bus travels north and the other one travels east, we know that this will be a right triangle. And if that is a right triangle, 60 kilometers and 80 kilometers are called the legs of the right triangle. And C is the hypotenuse. And hypotenuse is always the longest side in a given right triangle. So, knowing that C is the largest side, which of the choices can you eliminate? C and D, right? Because the side can't be less than 80 kilometers. C has to be more than 80 kilometers. To solve for the missing sides of a right triangle, we're using the Pythagorean theorem. Are you familiar with the formula? C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared, where C is the hypotenuse. So in this problem, the missing side is C, so we have C squared. A and B could be any one of the legs. So 60 squared plus 80 squared. And simplifying this, 6 squared is 36, and then we have two zeros. 8 squared is 64, and then we have two zeros. Adding together, we have 10,000. To solve for the C, don't forget to get the square root of both sides. And we have here four zeros. So when you get the square root of one, that's one, you have four zeros, you get half the number of zeros. So that means it will be 100. Because 100 times 100 will give you 10,000. So the answer is letter B, 100 kilometers. Working with right triangles, it's really helpful to know the basic Pythagorean triple. And that is the sides 3, 4, and 5. These three sides will always form a right triangle. Now, if I will multiply each of these sides by 2, this gives me 6, 4 becomes 8, 5 becomes 10. What about if I multiply this by 10? 6 becomes 60, 8 becomes 80, and 10 becomes 100. So if you notice, in the 60 kilometers and 80 kilometers, we're expecting that the third side or the hypotenuse will be 100 kilometers. Question number two. Calculate the mean absolute deviation of the following numbers 60, 80, 100, 75, and 95. So this type of question is either you know or you don't. So there's really no way to eliminate some of the choices. When we say mean absolute deviation, it involves multiple steps. The first thing that you need to do is calculate for the mean of the data. So given these numbers, to calculate for the mean, we need to add first these five data. So 60 plus 80 plus 100 plus 75 and then plus 95. And then we're dividing by 5 because there's 5 numbers. Without using calculators, 60 plus 80 is 140. 140 plus 100 is 240. 
And we know this 2 will add up to 170. So 240 and 170 will give us 410. Now, to get the mean, we need to divide 410 by 5. So 5 can go to 41 8 times. That's 40. We subtract, so that's 1, bring down 0, so that means it's 2. So the mean is 82, which is our first step. Step number 2 is to calculate for the absolute deviation. And to do that, we need to subtract the mean from each of the data. So we have 60, 80, 100, 75, and 95. We need to subtract 82 from each of this to get the deviation. And then we need to get the absolute value of those answers. So 60 minus 82 is equal to negative 22. Absolute value is 22. 80 minus 82, negative 2. Absolute value is 2. 100 minus 82 is 18. Absolute value will always be positive because it's the distance of a number from 0. 75 minus 82 is negative 7. Absolute value is 7. 95 minus 82 is 13. And finally, the last step is to find the mean of these absolute value deviations. So to calculate for the MAD or mean absolute deviation, we need to add 82 to 18, 7, 3, 13, and then divide it by 5. So 7 plus 3 is 20, that's 20, and that's 22. So 20, 20, 22, that's 62 over 5. And changing this to mixed number, we know that 5 can go into 62 12 times. 12 times 5 is 60, and the remainder is 2. So 12 and 2 fifths. The only thing that has a 12 is 12.4, because 2 fifths is 0.4. So the answer for question number 2 is letter A. Again, to calculate for the mean absolute deviation, it requires three steps. Step 1 is to calculate for the mean. Step 2, you need to find the absolute deviations, meaning you subtract the mean to each of the data, and then you take the absolute value. And number 3, you need to find the mean of the absolute deviations. Question number 3, which of the following is the factorization of the binomial x squared minus 4 squared? So this binomial can be simplified as x squared minus 16 because 4 squared is 16. So here we can eliminate already the choices A because 4 times 2 is only 8. And here if you do distributive property, you will not get uh, 16. So we only have two choices here, B and D. One thing that you need to remember about factoring x squared minus 16 is it is called a difference of squares and when you're factoring difference of squares there will be two pairs of parentheses x squared we're going to use x times x because that's x squared for the minus 16 we need to use plus 4 and minus 4 and that is why the answer here should be letter d Another example is if you have a squared minus b squared, you can factor it again as you need to do a times a, that will give you a squared. Then you need to do plus b times minus b, because b times negative b will give you minus b squared. Also, if you have a squared minus 100, we can factor this difference of squares as a times a, that's 100, and 1 will always be plus, the other one is minus. For the 100, you need to use perfect square, 10 and 10. So plus 10 and minus 10. Last example. If I give you x squared minus 49, what will be your complete factors? Yeah, it's x plus 7 and x minus 7. That is only applicable if that is 
perfect square minus a perfect square. So for number 3, the answer is letter D, x minus 4 times x plus 4. Question number 4. What value of x will satisfy the equation below? Again, this is the type of question that you can't eliminate choices. So in this problem, the first thing that we need to do is distributive property. We need to do 0.4 times 5x, 0.4 times 1470, and then we're going to solve for the x value. So 4 times 5 is 20, but there's a decimal point, so this becomes 2x. Now we need to multiply 1470 times 0.4. So 4 times 0 is 0. 4 times 7, 28, carry 2. 4 times 4, 16, plus 2, 18, carry 1 again. 4 times 1 is 4, plus 1 is 5. And there's one decimal place, so we have 588. So now we have 2x minus 588 is equal to x. Solving equations in one variable, we need to isolate the variable on one side. It doesn't matter whether you move it to the left or you move all the x to the right for as long as you're doing the inverse operation. 2x is positive, so the inverse will be minus 2x to both sides. So this will be cancelled. We now have negative 588 is equal to x minus 2x means 1x minus 2x, which is negative 1x. Now we need to divide both sides by negative 1. So x value is positive 588, which is letter D. Question number 5. Which of the following has the greatest value? So to solve this problem, we need to simplify each expression using order of operations. So the expression that can be easily simplified is options B and D. So 3 to the third power means we need to do 3 times 3 times 3, and that's going to be 27. Option D, we need to do 3 plus 3, 6, 6 plus 3, 9, and 9 square means 9 times 9, and that is 81. So this means that it can't be letter B. For letter A, we can simplify 3 square as 9, 3 plus 3 is 6, and 6 square is 36. Now we need to add 3 plus 9, that's 12. 12 plus 36 is 48. Again, D is more than 48, so we can eliminate choice A. And now we have 50% chance of getting the right answer, either C or D. For letter C, 3 plus 3 is 6, and we need to square it, that's 36. Now we need to do 36 to the second power. For sure, if you multiply 36 by itself, that's going to be more than 81. So the answer should be letter C. But we will still double check the answer. So 36 squared means 36 times 36. So if you multiply that, we have 36 times 36. 6 times 6 is 36, carry 3. 6 times 3, 18, plus 3, 21. Now we multiply 3 by 6, 18. Carry 2, 3 times 3, 9, plus 2 is 10. So the answer is 1, 2, 96. And indeed, letter C is bigger. Thank you for watching, and please consider subscribing to my channel at Celso Academy.